Hello and welcome back to another HitFilm tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can create this awesome can crushing effect inspired by Stranger Things in HitFilm 3. All you'll need for this is some footage of your actor pretending to destroy can with their brain, and you'll also need some footage of your can being crushed. So for this, I moved into frame, crushed the can a bit, moved out of frame, crushed the can, and repeated that process. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is extract all of the different stages of the can crushing effect. And to do this, create a composite shot out of the footage of you crushing the can. You can name this whatever you want, I'm just going to call it can extraction. Then you're going to want to go through the footage and export the frames where you've moved out of the way and the can has changed in terms of its crushing. So I'm going to start on the first frame where I've moved out the way and then press the little export frame button and then you can choose where you want the frames to be saved and then select re-import to the media bin. As you can see this will then create a new folder called frames where it will then add your frames. Then I'm just going to go through the timeline and look for the next place where the can is being crushed. And I've moved out the way. You then want to repeat this process of going through and extracting the frames until you reach the end of the clip and the can is completely crushed. Then once you've gone through and extracted all of the frames, you're going to want to create a new composite shot and then count up the number of different images you have and then multiply that by two and that will be the length in frames that you want. So I have 15 uh, images, so different stages of the cans crushing and so I'm going to want to set this to being 30 frames long. Then just hit OK. This is where we're now going to be assembling all of these images together to animate the crushing of the can. And to do this, select all of the frames, drag them into the timeline, and then what you want to do is import all of the clips, and then go in by two frames, select the slice tool, hold down alt on your keyboard, and then click. This will then trim all of the frames to being two frames long. Then you can select all of the ends of the clips and delete them. So you've now only got the chunks that are two frames long. Then you want to go through and create a bit of a staircase out of these frames. Then you want to go through each of these images and cut out the Coke can by selecting the image, selecting the freehand mask tool, making sure the playhead is over that frame, and then go around cutting it out. And then to do the next frame, select it, make sure the playhead's over it, make sure you've got the freehand mask tool selected, and then cut it out. Once you've gone through and cut out the drinks can from all of the images, you now can go through and change the duration of each of the frames. This will then mean that it can look like it's starting slower and then speeds up as it goes on. So I'm going to move some of these later on frames to being one frame long, while I leave some of the start ones to being two frames long. Once you've done this, go to the end frame and then go up to the timestamp and copy this and paste it in the duration for the composite shot. This will then mean that the composite shot is only as long as the animation. Then go to your clean plate footage and make a composite shot out of it. And then drag in your can crush animation that you just made on top of the footage. And then line up the can crush with where you want it to get crushed by the actor. And as you can see, it is invisible, and then it appears, and then it goes back to being invisible again. To fix this, go to the Can Crush Animation composite that you just made, and copy the first frame, and then paste this into the timeline, and expand it out up until the animation starts, and then select the last frame, and paste it after the animation ends. Then select all of these three layers, right click, and select Make Composite Shot. I'm just going to call this Can Crush. Now that you've done this, duplicate the can crush, drag the duplicate below the original, and then rename it to shadow. Then for the shadow layer, 
go up to the controls tab and with the selection tool selected change the anchor point so that then the coke can's anchor point lines up with the middle of the bottom of the can. This just makes it easier when rotating the can to create the shadow. Then to put it back where the original is, type in the same values from the anchor point to the position. Then select the shadow layer and make it 3D by clicking on the little checkerboard square there. And it will ask you if you want to add a camera and just hit yes. Then play around with the rotation on the x-axis and then also on some of the others. And then line it up where your original shadow was. You can also play around with the scale uh, if you'd have more of an elongated shadow, but play around with that until you get something you like the look of. Then go up to the effects tab and search for a fill color. Drag it onto the shadow layer and change the color to black. Then search for a blur and put this below the fill color and increase the radius depending on your lighting. If you had really harsh lighting, then you don't need to have that much of a blur. Then under transform, decrease the opacity so it's a bit more subtle. Then in order to add an ambient shadow, duplicate the Can Crush full composite. Drag this in between the shadow and the Can Crush and rename this to ambient. Then with the ambient shadow layer selected, select the rectangular mask tool and just cut around the bottom of the can. Then select the ambient shadow composite and drag it down on the Y axis just a tiny bit. And then grab a fill color. Once again, set this to black and then add a blur. You can then play around with the opacity a bit just to get something that looks a bit more natural. And that's the effect completed. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, then please leave a like and subscribe. And if you're interested in Stranger Things and other Stranger Things visual effects, then why don't you check out this tutorial that I made last week, showing you how you can make your nosebleed using some action VFX footage. Goodbye.